And today I'm going to be going over how to do IEP goal progress reporting. And this handout is available to you. Uh, it was sent out with the video link. So make sure that you are logged into C's and I will go over how to do it. So what is progress reporting? Um, progress reporting is the process by which uh, special ed teachers report to parents and families on their students' growth and progress toward the IEP goals. So according to IDEA, you can read here, we um, are required to include a description of how the child has progressed toward meeting their goals, how that will be measured, when the reports will be made toward the IEP goals and how that would be provided. And so uh, currently we have to do that um, as often as the report cards go out, which is different depending on what level you're at. So progress your monitoring is essential to evaluating the appropriateness of a child's program, yet there is compli less compliance with this required component of the IEP than any other one. Um, this is truly what makes an IEP is, are the, is the student making growth or not? Um, so some common concerns and legal findings you can read here. And then when do we progress report as a district? Again, at least as often as all students are updated on their progress. Um, so each grading period, so currently at the middle school and New Horizons, that progress is every quarter, and um, which you know equates to four times a year. At the elementary and the high school level, that are um, including Delta, they progress report every trimester, which is three times a year. And then if the IEP team determines necessary, they it, um, can increase uh, depending on what that determination is. And for the final progress reporting of an IEP year, or if it's at the end of the first reporting period, which is within a few weeks of the annual IEP, you may communicate to the family that the IEP goal is updated in the new IEP. Uh, understanding that you're bringing in the old goal information and talking about how they progressed. Um, and so a final report on those goals would be needed. Uh, best practice would be to include that decision on the IEP where progress reports start or on the prior written notice at the end of the meeting. So included on the progress reports would be data for all the goals. Um, we do not progress report on the objectives and data that is consistent with the goal. So if you used a percentage, then your progress data needs to be a percent. If you use trials, it would be trials, et cetera. And then the date the data was collected. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the end of the quarter or trimester date, but it would be whatever date you actually collected the data, which should be by the end of that quarter or trimester. So if uh, you'll go to your uh, C's page with me, we'll go ahead and demo this. If you're on your launch pad, you click on IEP. And then you'll know here we have three uh, columns and draft packets, current progress, and locked packets. Locked packets houses the most recent I, uh, current locked IEP, the full packet. Current progress is just for the goal. So this is where you would go in and click on the goal that you want to progress report on. Um, and you'll notice that there is, uh, that here, as opposed to in the annual packet, you can actually click and type a date and click and enter information. So this is where you would progress report uh, the next open available uh, uh, blank space. Uh, all progress reporting does need to be completed in C's unless it is a transfer student who doesn't have an IEP in C's yet. And so uh, if that's the case, you can handwrite on the hard copy of the IEP or you can um, include, you know, go ahead and type in the goal information if you want to. That's up to you. Um, so, uh, and then the progress should be locked, current progress. Anytime we lock an annual IEP, that should get locked along with it. Um, if you do have a couple packets open there, let us know, and we'll try to to problem uh, to troubleshoot that. So this just goes through what we just did. 
So who prints and sends the reports? The teacher of record is responsible for printing um, and giving or mailing the progress reports home to the families. Some buildings have set up an alternate system for doing this, so just check with your building teams, especially at elementary level. I know that they do a lot of stuff through conferences, so um, make sure you know what the process is so that you're not, um, so it's not inconsistent. And how do I document or provide reports to parents or guardians? So we must document that we provided these reports. So if you are, um, parent signatures are required, documenting receipts. So if you do it at a conference uh, or documentation that it's enclosed is made in the uh, report card comments or maybe sent home with a report card. And then we also have a dated letter that is provided to the parents, um, which are um, in the templates. So a non-compliant activity would be that the progress report was completed by staff, copy was filed in their working file, and um, uh, the parents report that they didn't receive the progress report, therefore no documentation that they were provided a copy. So we want to make sure to be compliant that they have, there's a copy in their working file, the documentation of the parent attending and receiving progress report will be filed in that building file, or completed, there's a progress report completed by staff and a copy is in the working file. Um, and then a note that the progress report is enclosed is made on the report card or progress report is completed, again, a copy in their working file and the dated letter. So here's the letter that you can send home. It's in Spanish and English. You're required to give a copy to the families. If this is mailed home, if the progress report is mailed home, then you have to attach the letter. Um, if the parent is Spanish speaking, you need to send it in Spanish and English. And again, keep a copy for your records. A lot of people make a double-sided copy of this and handwrite in all the information instead of typing, and that's okay as well. Um, that is up to you how you want to do that. And they use the double-sided even if they're not Spanish speaking and just fill out the English side. So what do you do if a student met all the goals in their area? If a student met all of their annual goals in a certain area, maybe math, and there were two goals and they met both of them, you do need to revise the goals um, or potentially if the district, if the team believes they're no longer eligible, then steps must be taken to initiate a real evaluation. If the student shows regression or no progress, um, then the team needs to schedule a meeting so that those um, goals can be revised if that is a consistent uh, thing that happens. If you can't report on a student's goal, then, um, and there's more than one goal in that area, then you, you can continue. But if there's only one goal and you can't report on that goal, then you're essentially saying that, they're, that you're not meeting the student's needs and there's no reason for that IEP. So you need to know what SDI is being given and what goal is being measured. Um, so you'd have to complete an amendment if that happens. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Candace or myself. Um, and that's it.